What's up guys? Welcome back to Between the Pylons. I'm John Camacho. Thank you so much for watching and today we are doing a draft review on the Pittsburgh Steelers and where I want to start with this guys is where I start with every single one of these videos and I want to think, talk about what was the plan coming into the draft and for the Pittsburgh Steelers I think what their plan was was to add to add weapons for one last run with Big Ben. Of course Big Ben is getting older. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, years left in, the, in his NFL career career I don't believe and uh, I think the Steelers are trying to put weapons around him to make one final push for for a championship run they had Duck Hodgins out there playing quarterback and they almost made the playoffs so so we'll see what they can do with one last run with Big Ben uh, and then the next question is did they add an offensive lineman it, within the first four rounds of the draft uh, to me you cannot name a bad team with a good offensive line so I always look for every single team to add some kind of depth to their offensive line position take a shot at the position because it's so so important yes you're going to miss sometimes but when you hit you just hit on a starter at one of the most vital positions in sports so so I, I i always look at that and yes the pittsburgh steelers did do that they took a guard out of louisiana with their fourth round pick so so they they followed that rule and the last one is get a piece of the strength of the of the draft right and for for this draft it is of course wide receiver and the Pittsburgh Steelers did do that with their very first pick in Chase Claybull uh, out of Notre Dame. So, so they absolutely did that as well. So, so I feel like the starting off the Pittsburgh Steelers are doing pretty good so far. <laughs> but all right, guys, let's get started talking about the actual players that they drafted. And we, I am going to talk about all the guys that they took within the first three rounds of this draft because I feel like that's where you get the majority of your actual starters uh, going into the 2020 season. And that's really what I'm interested in talking about right now. Uh, first things first, though we do need to talk about the trade with the Dolphins that landed them Minka Fitzpatrick and essentially they traded the 18th overall pick in the 2020 draft for Minka Fitzpatrick and a fourth rounder so good deal I mean really good deal that's insane value if, if you told me you got Minka Fitzpatrick with the 18th pick I mean that's that's the best player available there um, I think that was a great move for the for the Steelers I am a diehard Dolphins fan I am wearing a Dolphins hat right now uh, so hurts me a little bit but hey he didn't want to play for the Dolphins so I can't be too upset it, it, it is what it is um, so I think that deserves to be in the conversation I think that deserves to be counted in with their draft because hey they spent a first round pick on him with their f first actual pick in this draft in the second round, pick number 49, they take Chase Claypool out of Notre Dame. And guys, I'm going to be really honest with you guys. If you listen to the podcast, you know I'm not a huge fan of, of Chase Claypool. I'm not. I, I don't believe. I didn't believe in the hype coming out. I knew that I was lower on him than the NFL. I knew that there was a lot of hype around him. And I knew there was a possibility of him going and and on day two. I didn't think he deserved to be anywhere near a top 50 pick I just didn't and at 49 that's just way way too uh, expensive for me I again I, I just didn't see it. I understand the measurables and all that was really, really good. But as far as on film, I, I didn't see a guy who I felt had a legitimate chance to compete on an NFL field in the first year or two. I think it's going to take a lot of development for him. Obviously, the NFL does not agree with me. Obviously, the Pittsburgh Steelers don't agree with me. And I got to be perfectly honest with you guys. I got very, very scared the second the Steelers put his name on the board. Uh, I, I really believe in the Steelers' ability to develop talent at the wide receiver position. It seems like they're always able to take later round guys and turn them into stars it just seems like that's what their mo is i mean they, they've just been doing it for so long as long as i can remember honestly uh so chase claypool could absolutely be the next version of that and he has all the physical tools he has all the measurables that you that you like uh the so so i i can't I can't deny the fact that I might look really silly for that, but that just is what it is. Um, I'm sure a lot of people were really excited about that pick, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say anything more about it. Moving on in the third round, pick number 102, they take Alex Highsmith, uh, out offensive linebacker, but more of a defensive end in my opinion, uh, out of Charlotte. And I'm not gonna lie, to you guys, I was really, really surprised by this pick, not because he's a bad prospect or a bad player or anything like that. I just didn't think he fit with the steel like to do I really didn't so I was a little bit confused I don't know if maybe I'm just reading the player the wrong way I looked at Alex Highsmith and I saw a guy who wins with speed 
who who wins with a really solid first step and and you know he has the measurables to win that way i didn't see a guy who who wins with power and is hard hitting and, and is the type of uh linebacker that we're used to seeing out of the steelers so so that was just a little bit surprising to me i didn't hate the value of alex highsmith here at, at 102 i just i didn't hate that at all i'll be honest with you guys there was a player that i liked a little bit more and i thought had higher upside that actually went one pick later to the eagles Devon Taylor out of Colorado is a guy that I would have loved on the Steelers, and I thought I thought that were, he there was a really good chance of him going to the Steelers. Uh, instead, they do take uh, they take Alex Highsmith, and and we'll see what happens with that. But again, guys, that's that's not to say I think he's going to be a bad player or that he was a bad prospect. I just didn't love the fit with the Steelers. Um, but moving on, as far as draft day trades, there weren't any. The big trade they made was was in September, I believe, when they when they traded with the Dolphins. So they pretty much stuck to where they were and, and drafted on their board. So so there's not a lot to talk about there. I, I do want to mention a couple other picks. Anthony McFarlane out of uh, Maryland, the running back out of Maryland. Uh, they took him in the fourth round, pick number 124. I thought that was a steal for them. That was actually my favorite move that they made in this draft, taking Anthony McFarlane there uh, it was an absolute steal and to be totally fair the best move that they made was trading for Fitzpatrick uh, at a time when I think a lot of people would have said that that was a dangerous move you know they just lost their starting quarterback who knew how high of a first round pick that was gonna be uh, but they bet on themselves and they they took a, uh, a defensive star and I think Fitzpatrick helped move that draft pick down the board a little bit by winning a bunch of games so so that that's pretty awesome for the Steelers again I'm a little bit butthurt so I'm not gonna say that's my favorite pick. I'm going to say Anthony McFarlane was my favorite pick. But moving on, I think my least favorite pick was the Chase Claypool uh, pick. And again, I, I hope I'm wrong. I really do because, you know, I root for all these guys. I'm not I'm not trying to shit on the player. I, as far as as far as a prospect uh, moving on to the next level, I didn't see it with Chase Claypool. I just didn't. But that's not to say he's not going to be a good pick. That's not to say that he doesn't have a lot to build on because he absolutely does. And he's going to the perfect spot again, like I said, with the Steelers. So I think it was a good pick for the Steelers. It just wasn't a value that I personally saw. And uh, that leads me to the uh, final thing I want to talk about, which was the biggest surprise of this draft class. And, and really, my biggest surprise was the fact that they didn't really move around in the draft. They, they came in with six picks, and they drafted six players at the exact same picks that they came in with. And, and it was a little bit surprising, just from the standpoint that I think they came into here wanting to add weapons around uh, Big Ben and wanting to give Big Ben a chance chance to really uh, succeed in the final years of his career. So so I, I was just a little bit surprised that they weren't a little bit more aggressive uh, from that mindset. But again, I, I understand they don't have a ton of assets and, and they were in a situation like the rest of the NFL where it, it's kind of tough. This was a very strange situation for everybody. The, the, the virtual draft, I do think, halted a lot of trades because there just there were decisions that couldn't be made as fast as they normally would with you know all the decision makers in one room together. My final grade for the Steelers is a C plus. I see what they were doing. I, I see how there could be uh, a really high high upside for a lot of their picks and I think that, that there could be that I could be completely wrong and this could be a great draft for them but based on my grades based on my value for these players I have to give them a C plus again they were able to get Fitzpatrick uh, with an eight with the 18th pick overall so I think that was a good pick uh, and they were able to get some good players in the later rounds uh, but as far as the impact players that they drafted in this class I, I just wasn't really impressed but all right guys thank you so much for watching please like and subscribe. Uh, let me know why you think I'm wrong about this draft class and why it was the best draft class ever. Uh, and please leave any other comments that you could possibly have. Let me know what you're thinking football wise and uh, come back for more videos, guys. Peace out.